Subscribing doesn't mean anything anymore unless you click the little bell next to it. So be sure to do that too and it'll notify you when I post new videos. Hey everybody, this is Brian. Today I'm going to talk to you about oil sending units. Shout out to Jason from Engineering Explained. We're going to explain it. I'm going to grab some hair and I'll be right back. Hello everyone. I'm not Chuck Norris, but I am emulating one of my idols, Jason from Engineering Explained. Today we're going to talk about oil sending units. We're going to explain those. And speaking of sending, I'd like to thank Jason for sending me the t-shirt. That was awesome. The oil sending units, they don't send oil. When I was a little kid, my dad was a mechanic, and I remember doing an oil sending unit job, and my dad was like, these are gravy. These are the way you make 50 bucks really quick and easy for having a socket and a little knowledge on where these are. Uh, when these fail, they tend to leak, and they tend to cause the light to come on. Uh, the way that they fail is they get clogged with oil, or they leak and lose the pressure that they're receiving. When they receive pressure, it opens the circuit and then the ground signal doesn't go to the light. For an idiot light to work, you have to have power and ground. That's the way direct current works. In most cars, they're DC. You know, you have alternating current in some of your newer hybrids, but back in the day it was all direct current. You had to have power and ground. And that's what they actually send, is they send ground when they're in their relaxed state and they don't have any oil pressure to them. So we're going to cut an oil sending unit open, show you what's inside of it. I think there might be some oil leaking out. Uh, we're going to show you on a car where they are. On the back of a Honda Accord 1999, what you see near an oil filter is the oil sending unit. Uh, they're typically located near your oil filter. The way that the oil is actually sent, contrary to popular belief, it's not the oil sending unit. It sounds like it would be, duh. Uh, but the oil in your oil pan gets sucked up through your pickup tube into your oil pump. From there it gets sent to the oil filter and then to your oil sending unit and then back through the whole rest of the engine. Only a small quantity uh, is sent to the oil sending unit. Most of it just gets bypassed and it just cruises right by to your crankshaft, your cam bearings, and onto the cylinder heads, all that other kind of stuff. And then it just drains back into the oil pan and repeat, rinse and repeat, right? I remember what that was like. <laughs> when you turn your key to the on position, it sends power to the light. Your oil doesn't have any pressure, so you have ground, so that's why you see this light when you first start your car. And then after you start it off, it doesn't turn off immediately, but it does turn off once your engine starts to rotate and that oil pressure is built up. And then the whole time that your engine's running, it has oil pressure, and it pushes that switch open so that it sends no ground to the light. Why do you have to have an idiot light for the oil and why is this so important? I mean think of this as the heart and the oil as a blood. If you lose that basically your engine's just going to chew itself up. It doesn't have the, the cooling, doesn't have the shock absorption, doesn't have a hydraulic force for all of your different uh, oil hydraulic controlled camshaft timing and whatnot and your engine is basically just going to chew itself up like a bunch of metal teeth on metal teeth. Let's look at some oil sending unit guts. It's just a pressure switch. It's just an interrupter type switch. It's basically like this clamp and the clamp would have ground flowing through it. So that ground goes to the little light that's in your dash and whenever you have oil pressure it's just like pushing on this and opening or interrupting the switch to make the oil light turn off. Uh, if the engine stalls and there's no more oil pressure it reconnects and the light comes on and says hey you don't have oil pressure. So this is two halves of the same sensor. This is the stud that the wire connects to that goes to your light to send it ground. You can see the little sections of spring that are cut away and a metal stopper plate at the top and the bottom. And then another little copper plate here that gets pressure from the oil. The oil goes up through this little hole and then pushes on this and causes this. You can see this little connection here between this uh, outer body portion and the insulated part here, but once you push up on it, then that creates an open circuit. Uh, the spring pressure uh, causes this to push back down and make contact when there's no oil pressure, but when the oil pressure overcomes the spring pressure, you see that little diaphragm separate like that, and voila, the light goes out. Open circuit means the light goes out and everybody's happy, because that means that you have oil pressure. What a cool little device. 
So this is what the new oil sending unit looks like. There's a little hole in it where the pressure goes in. Uh, there's a special socket that fits three different kinds of oil sending units. You can see that this one fits about like that. It's not like your normal nut. You can put a wrench on it. It is parallel. It is a hexagon. Uh, but they're a little different. It's a good idea to use Teflon around the thread so that it doesn't leak. This tape's too wide. It's a really high quality good tape. Uh, but if you just fold it a little bit or pucker it up a little, it'll fit perfectly. So you want the tape to go over the top of it and wrap clockwise. That way it doesn't uh, push itself off when you go to start it into the engine block. Just wrap that up around there. So I don't have anything across the hole, nothing's going to get in there and mess stuff up. But I've got it all the way down the side and it gets thicker as you go back. That's what you're looking for. So if you like this learning format, be sure to check out Jason from Engineering Explained. He does a lot of whiteboard videos with great explanations. A really smart guy. Um, if you want to be notified of videos that I have coming up in the future, make sure to click the subscribe button, but then also click the little bell. That little bell is what gets you your notifications you're looking for. Subscribing doesn't really mean anything anymore unless you do that. Take charge by picking your favorite channels, going to where you've already subscribed first, and then click the bell and that way you're back in the driver's seat and you get to watch the creators that you want to instead of having whatever your Google wants shoved in front of your face. You can click here uh, to go to Jason's channel, Engineering Explain. You can click here uh, to see a video that I did about uh, talk sensors. And if you would like to subscribe and see more videos from me, you can click this uh, link right here, guy with the hammer and the sparks. Uh, if you'd like to see more about oil and how oil works, I've got a video on that here. It talks about the different additives, how to pick the right oil for your car. Uh, be sure to check that out. And uh, thanks for tuning in.